the designers of the Capitol soon ran into the same old problem, how to build a taller, heavier dome without its walls cracking or pushing outward. Here's a point of comparison. Here's that dome, and here's Washington's original choice. Now, to create a dome of this size would require massive walls like the Pantheon, or lots of chains like St. Peter's, or even rebuilding the whole thing. Well, they didn't want to do that. So instead, they came up with a brilliant bit of engineering trickery. That dome is really a thin shell, a facade. And the structure that holds up the facade is a ring of curved iron ribs, 36 of them. I've just drawn two. We don't see them, but they hold up the dome that we can see from the outside. Underneath is a smaller dome, open at the top like the Pantheon. And that's what you see from inside the Capitol. And outside, the high dome-shaped shell is an illusion too. Though it looks like it's built of stone, every bit of the Capitol dome, from the columns to the ornamentation, is made of cast iron molded and shaped to look like the stone building it crowns. This is what these coffers really look like from the other side. This is the space between the domes. And this is one of the 36 supporting ribs. In fact, it's number 33. The outer shell is actually bolted to this rib, sort of like being in the hull of an iron ship. To my right, you can see the curve of the inner dome. It's self-supporting, but it's still attached to the ribs. The best thing about building with iron, as opposed to stone, is that you can cast pieces in almost any size and shape you want, and then assemble them like some huge erector set. It makes building a structure like this go a lot faster. <laughs>